Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 175. Before I get into this week's review, as always, if you haven't already, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button and help us reach our goal for 2022 of hitting 5,000 subscribers. I'd like to hit 4,200 by the end of this month, which means we've got about 40 subs to go, so each and every one of you can help us get a little bit closer to our goal. With that out of the way, let's get right into this week's review. So, this week's chapter is dedicated to the fight between Yuta and Kurorushi. It's a pretty good fight. It ends this chapter, but I thought it was pretty good. Kurorushi, in terms of how well he performed against Yuta, kind of did about as well as I expected, though there is a bit of a caveat to that. Um, we find out some more techniques that Kurorushi has. He gets, like, a name technique called Meditating Worms. Um... It's not entirely clear what they do, but it seems like when Yuta cuts them open, whatever gross substance is inside of them kind of gets in his eyes and blinds him a little bit. So I guess they're kind of like distractions or something, I don't know. Um, but we see the Fester Life Blade in action, and what it does is it shoots out probably like eggs that burrow into whoever gets hit by them, and then basically produces cockroach chest bursters. Which is pretty horrifying. Um, like, the whole cockroach is eating people was really disgusting already, but now, like, them eating their way out of a person, like, fucking chestburster style, it, it is pretty horrendous. It's pretty horrific. Kurorushi is quite disgusting. He's quite possibly the most disgusting cursed spirit we've seen. Which is saying a bit, because Mahito, with his idol transfiguration, was a thing. And Idol Transfiguration still is a thing that Kenjaku has. I should probably go over that a little bit later, talking about Yuta potentially having a fight with Kenjaku in the future. I say potentially, I'm almost 100% confident that it's going to happen, uh, but I'll talk about that more in a little bit when we talk more about Yuta in this chapter. Um, but Roach-sama is quite strong. He is quite the powerful creature. Um, and we also get confirmation that he is indeed intelligent beyond just being able to think and stuff. He's actually able to talk. He's not able to talk that well. He's not super fluent in human speech, but he's still able to communicate. So, you know, kind of puts him a little more on the level of the Disaster Spirits. I, I, I would say he's probably weaker than the Disaster Spirits. Um, like his techniques are more horrifying, most certainly. Um, but I can't really imagine him beating any of the Disaster Spirits, especially since we don't see if he has a domain or not. I, I'm going to assume, probably, that all of the people in the Sendai Colony, like the, the four big people, the four Yonko of Sendai Colony, are probably all at least a little weaker than the Disaster Spirits. Although Drew's technique sounded really busted, so I don't know. Um... I don't know, I guess it's more so a compatibility with each other's techniques in, in instead of, like, overall power. Even though they're all clearly quite strong, uh, compatibility of techniques is also another thing we have to take into consideration. Um, but Kurorushi kind of fucks up Yuta a little bit, gets him with those chest bursters. It's pretty rough. Yuta actually takes some pretty serious damage. There's, of course, a caveat to that. Um, that is mostly because Yuta is intentionally holding back for most of this fight. He doesn't want to use Rika, which is in air quotes again, so now I'm very confident that this is not the real Rika. Um, he's using Rika to protect the civilians in the stadium, and he doesn't want to reveal to the people who he assumes are watching him, uh, that he has reverse curse technique. Um, so, first thing... Seems like Rika is still, as someone said, in the fuck off tier. Like, he's just not even concerned about anything happening to the civilians because Rika is there. So, Rika, I think, is still very clearly the most powerful thing in Yuta's arsenal. Like, if he brings Rika to a fight, vast majority of the time, it's just over. Like, Rika's just gonna end the fight if he summons her. Um, so, still got that card up his sleeve. Second thing, Reverse Curse Technique. This is brought up again in this chapter, and it's something I kind of forgot about. Using Reverse Curse Technique to create positive energy, energy is able to be used offensively. We saw that with Maharaga. Maharaga's sword used Reverse Curse Technique to create positive energy to one-shot curses. 
Sukuna said that if he wasn't inhabiting Yuji's body, if he was a fully fledged cursed spirit, he would be one shotted by it. He would die. So because of that, Yuta is able to one shot curses. One shot potential for curses. I say potential. If he hits a curse with reverse curse technique, it probably just dies. Unless it somehow finds a way to defend itself with cursed energy or something, but I don't think that's how it works because cursed spirits are made of cursed energy and the positive energy of reverse curse technique just kind of dispels that. So pretty much any cursed spirit in the series, yeah, Yuta one-shots. I'm pretty sure he can one-shot Mahito. I know Mahito's technique is based around altering the shape of his soul, but he uses his curse technique for that. So... I'm pretty sure Yuta could kill Mahito, like, efficiently. Uh, Top-tier characters are able to kill Mahito just by wearing him down, that is a possibility, but generally the most effective way to kill Mahito is by actually striking his soul, which only a few people we've seen are able to do. Um, so, yeah, any other curse in the verse? Get the fuck out of here. Yuta can one-shot them. Um, and that's what he does, kind of. Uh, because Kurarushi is going to eat him, and then Yuta grabs him, grabs him by the head, very passionately, and gives him a big ol' smooch, gives him a big ol' kiss on the lips, and kind of bites him a little, very kinky, uh, and uses this to send reverse curse technique directly into Kurarushi's brain, killing him. Which is certainly a very creative and raw and disgusting way to finish off an enemy. I wish I as well could give such passionate affection to my wonderful patrons. Special thanks to Archbear CJ2K, Neo, Tyrish Simmons, Dijon Redden, Anthony Chavez, Honey Mustard, K God, Chris Redfield, Rat, Ryzen 4K, Artist, Mac Campaign, Wave of Manga, Chuck's Feed and Seed, Jake's Dury Z, Play Free Labs, Kanichi Kaneda, Straw Bones, and Neverest. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at some point during videos, or access to reviews for One Piece and The Boxer, you can always become a patron as well. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. This is the second time that we know of, of Yuta smooching with a cursed spirit. Goddamn womanizer. Anyway, Yuta's power. He underperforms a little in this chapter, but that's because he's pretty explicitly holding back, something I didn't really take into account that much during the reaction. That's why I do the reactions and the reviews. Yuta is still top tier. I mean, he's still... Listen, being able to one-shot curses is fucking ridiculous. Considering that they are the entire force that Jujutsu Sorcerers exists to fight against. Yeah. Yeah. Yuta's still top of the verse. We we don't even know the current capabilities of Rika. Um, Quote-unquote Rika. Um, I say Yuta... Is still, like, top three right now. Um, there is the question, of course... Can he defeat Kenjaku 1v1? He thinks that he can. A lot of people think that he can. I think he can. Um, it's questionable how easy that will be, because if it's like a really high difficulty fight, which I imagine it would be, um, there's always the chance that he'll lose. Um, but we now know that because of his usage of reverse curse technique, the cursed spirits that Kenjaku is able to control with cursed spirit manipulation are pretty much null and void. He just one-shots them, it doesn't matter. Um, the most dangerous thing Kenjaku has right now, other than whatever unknown plans he may have for dealing with Yuta should the time come, which it will, um, is Idle Transfiguration. Idle Transfiguration is still probably the most dangerous technique in the series. Um, no one is safe from it, except for Yuji, because of Sukuna. Um, so that still poses a pretty massive risk to Yuta in a fight with Kenjaku. Um, but considering he has Rika, there is the possibility that, you know, don't really need to get up and close yourself to deal with him. But then Kenjaku has Cursed Spirit Manipulation, so if Rika is still technically a Cursed Spirit, then Kenjaku can absorb Rika and control her, and that would be very, very bad. Very fucking bad if that happens. So, you know, still possibilities for how the fight between the both of them could go, I suppose. We still haven't had it confirmed if either of them have a domain expansion. Like, they're both special grades. 
but we haven't seen or really had any allusion to them having domain expansion. Utah doesn't mention it at all. It's possible that Utah does not have domain expansion yet. However, considering Utah is indeed a prodigy and has special grade power, there is no doubt in my mind that he can develop one. Um, maybe he'll develop one during the Cullen games, I don't know. Actually, that does feel like a fairly distinct possibility. Um, and we don't know if Kenjaku has one. I assume he would use whatever Ghetto's domain expansion would be since he's using his technique. Um, so I mean, I, I guess that means we would see whatever Ghetto's domain expansion would be, which would be pretty cool. Um, now, the chapter ends off with Guro appearing behind Yuta, and then we see space start to be warped, so this does confirm that Uro's technique is what I hoped it was. It's like reality bending, which is so good. So good. Love that stuff. Assuming that Ryu is not an idiot, he's going to help Uro try and beat Yuta, because they should know very well neither of them can 1v1 him. They can't do it. So, ideally, Ryu joins in with Uro, and they start doing some crazy combo shit, reality bending and giant cursed energy ranged attacks. Imagine if Uro bends the space to make a reality bending railgun for Ryu. Would that not be the sickest shit ever? I feel like it would be, so that's why Gege has to do it. Um, so, Yuta's definitely beaten these guys, but he's probably going to be a little worse for wear by the end of it. However, he is able to heal himself with Reverse Curse Technique, as he does after his fight with Kuarushi. So, any damage he takes is really not that big of a concern. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, a very good chapter, very solid combat chapter. Glad to be back from break, and I'm very excited to see what we get next week. But what did you guys think of this week's chapter? Let me know down in the comments. Be sure to let me know what you are expecting to get from the rest of this fight in Sendai City. I'm expecting this to probably be around like seven chapters total, probably around as long as Reggie's fight with Megumi. I can't imagine this will take as long as the entire Tokyo Colony number one chapters, uh, because it's Yuta doing business. So with that, that's all I've got to say for this week's review. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Jujutsu Kaisen chapter reactions and reviews every week that we get a new chapter. If you enjoy discussing Jujutsu Kaisen with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce in this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.